Miyuyam, no tong Diana Caudel, no ata Luceno. I just said Miyuyam to everyone, which is hello everyone in the Luceno language. I went no tong, which means my name, Diana Caudel, and I again went to my heart and says no ata Luceno. No in the Luceno language does not mean no like in English. It means I, me, or my. So when I said no tong, I says my name. I want to welcome everybody today that I am going to be speaking regarding on the Native American history here in San Diego County. Uh, I am Luceno. I'm ninth generation here uh, in San Diego County. I was born here in Oceanside and my family is from the San Luis Rey Valley area. What we're going to say now is that kids that do you realize how many Native people that are here in San Diego County? San Diego County has the most reservations of any county or state in the United States. It has 18 reservations. 13 of them are from the Kumeyaay people, and five of them are from the Luceno, and then we have two in Riverside, and then we have one Kawea reservation. San Diego is fortunate to have three different nations here. We have the Kumeyaay Nation, the Luceno Nation, the Kawea Nation, and then we have the Kumpeño people. Two distinct languages are spoken here in San Diego County. We have the Kumeyaay people who speak the Hokan or the Yuman uh, language is from the Arizona area in Colorado. Then we have the Luceno language, which is the Southern Shoshone or Ute as token Southern Shoshone dialect. Then we have the Kawea people, which is uh, like the Luceno, but a little bit different dialect. Like if you lived in, in northern Texas, there'll be a, a different dialect and also from southern Texas. Then we have the Cupeño people. The Cupeños also speak the uh, Southern Shoshone or Luceno language. We have also in the state of California, uh, 26 different dialects of language. We have the most dialects of language in anywhere in the United States, including Alaska. We have over 143 federally recognized tribes, about 100 and some non-federally recognized tribes. So again, state of California is pretty unique that we have more tribes in the state of California by itself. We have here also, uh, here in Southern California, people are always asking, you know, why do we come to California or Southern California? And one of the things I'd like to point out is because here in Southern California, we do have things that are very uh, unique. We, all, we have to the north of us, we have one of our famous mountains that we have, and that's the Palomar Mountain, which has a large observatory. To the east of us, we have the desert. To the south of us, we have another country. And to the west of us, we have the Pacific Ocean. So where else can you live in the United States that you can go into the mountains if you want to go in the snow, you want to go to the desert, you want to visit another country, or you want to enjoy the ocean. So that's why it's pretty unique here in Southern California. We have here with the people here in uh, the Luceno people and the Cahuillo people have been here for thousands and thousands of years. It wasn't until the mission period in the 1700s that they started really doing something with the native people. In the 1500s, we had Francis Drake that went up the coast of, coast of California and he did see some of the native people there. Um, I can imagine what was being done at that time because at one time I was up there in Camp Pendleton on, on a high mountain and I'm overlooking uh, towards the mountain and to the ocean. And I was thinking of my ancestors and when they saw this white, big white kite or a cloud or something floating on that ocean and they didn't know what it was. They went probably running to the to the edge of the cliff there overlooking the ocean and waiting for this big vessel or whatever it was coming up the ocean. And they were probably really surprised and what couldn't it have been. Well I can imagine the people that were on that vessel and on that ship and they can just imagine they probably got that long telescope that they have and they were probably looking up there on the coast and watching the Indian people all up there and one of the things they're probably saying is, oh my gosh, you know, they're savages because they were not had any clothes on. You've got to think of our climate here in this area that we didn't need that type of a clothing. But fortunate enough in the 1500s, Francis Drake kept going up the coast and went further north. So it wasn't until after Cabrillo came here and uh, into the San Diego Harbor 
and then the mission started coming through that all of a sudden we started losing everything. Uh, there's stories about San Diego, what, um, when they started building the mission, the natives did burn it down three times, uh, and that was the Kumeyaay people. With the Luceno people, we're a little bit more friendly, <laughs> I guess, or whatever. We're not as warrior-like as the Kumeyaay or the desert people. So I'm going to be talking about um, the things that are behind me. I'm going to go with the baskets and I'm going to be going with the clothing. And we're going to go into the musical instruments and some of the hunting and, and working tools. If you look into the scenery that we have here, uh, around us we have surrounding with the oak trees and the weather is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the question to you, what do you think the boys and men wore? Now I know that uh, you're probably thinking that we had uh, leather, et cetera, and some of the clothing that they had, like the Plains Indians, but we did not have that. You gotta think back onto the weather that we had here. It was very warm and comfortable. So mainly we didn't have a lot of clothing, <laughs> but men and boys did wear some type of protection when they went out hunting or they went um, out to uh, visit other tribes and that it's a piece of a leather here. This is probably from the deer hide. And what they did, they put it around their waist and they used it as a, a loincloth. Now, if you can remember, Tarzan wore one, etc., and our, you know, George that you see in the cartoons. So think about that. And it's a piece of leather that they wrapped around their waist and it was only for protection. But when it got cool, and they were still working out there. We were fortunate enough that they hunted. And this is a nice size of a deer hide. Okay, and what they would do with this deer hide, they made a cape out of it, and they would go ahead and put it around their shoulders. And they would carry this. So they only had two really type of clothing that they wore. They would have the loincloth, and then they would have the cape, uh, leather cape from the deer hide to protect them. The women and girls wore a little bit more clothing. Okay, this is a skirt that I've had for a number of years. And we had to look to the different trees and plants to make this. We couldn't go to a store, to like Walmart or Kohl's or anything to buy our clothing. So we had to look to nature. This skirt is called a willow bark skirt. Okay, and we would put it around our waist and uh, we would wear that. This, this skirt was mostly worn in the winter time okay because it's it's heavier but underneath it we also would probably put rabbit skin underneath the skirt but in the summertime this is a small replica we would have a different type of skirt this is light and it was made out of yucca again we had to look to nature the plant now if you see this big plant behind me in the picture that's a yucca. And from that yucca plant, it also provides us food and, and uh, different things that we can eat. But those green leaves, we cannot eat. So we would take those green leaves, pound them on a rock, and then they become fibrous. We dry them and we have our yucca skirt. Now you're thinking if we wore anything from the waist up, we did not. Okay, we wore a lot of jewelry and the shells but we did not have anything from the waist up. But there also was having an outfit that if you wanted to have that, excuse me, I did make this, this is mine. Get put it on. But this is out of a deer hide also. This deer hide, I can tell you right now, I shot this one <laughs> when I was a teenager hunting right here up in Palomar Mountain. And so you can see where the bullet hole was on that piece of leather. Um, but I went ahead and decorated it with the abalone shells and I would wear this. This was worn in 2004 with the opening of the Native American Museum in Washington, D.C. at the mall. So I did wear some of that. But the girls also other than that type of thing. They had the cape too. They wore the cape just like the men did if they got cold. They would put it around their shoulders 
and to keep warm. I have a doll here that kind of gives you an idea of what the girls looked like and what they wore. We had the basket hat and when we had the fur with the rabbit and then with the, with the skirts. Now, when I'm going to go through on the, with the different the clothing, you're going to ask yourself, did you guys wear shoes? Well, yes and no. Yes, we wore a type of a shoe, but we were mostly going barefoot all the time. But again, we could not go to a, a shoe store to buy anything. We had to learn how to make our own, okay? And so these shoes are made, again, from our yucca plant. Again, we look at those leaves, we cut them, we dried them, and then we sized them here, and we put uh, on our foot. Now these, think you would think that they're pretty rough, but if you wear them, this is going to become pretty smooth, and your footprint's going to be coming into these shoes here. So no one can really borrow your shoes. You can know that somebody uh, would not fit them correctly. Most of the time we carry these shoes on our side here, or we carry them with us. Uh, because we needed to go, if we were out in the rocks or in the hot desert, uh, we would put the sandal on. But most of the time that we were barefooted. What I'm holding in my hand is one of our houses. And what we call it in Luceno, we call this a quicha. It just means house. But if I want to say my house, I would say uh, no kai. In other words, I take off the, the C-H-A at the end of Kicha, use the root of the word K-I-I, -I, put a no in front of it, because remember when I had said no means I, me, or my, and so I would say no Kai. This house is very, uh, sm not small, but it's not a permanent house. We didn't need per permanent housing. You know, we were able to sleep under the oak trees in the open, but we really wanted the, the Kichas to be out of the element. And so what we would do, and the men and boys would make this, they would go and find willow branches, and then you can see that the structure here, and then we would cover it either with tule or with willow. Why would we use willow? Um, willow is a natural insecticide, and so it keeps out the insects. Here you can see that we had like a, a fire inside there, a fire ring, and then the hole up here for the smoke. What you don't see on here that we dug it three feet down, uh, into the earth, and that was to, ke to keep you warm with the fire down below, and it would keep, you the, keep the interior warm. So this is the quicha. I do have photos of quichas, and these photos are from the Pechanga Reservation. They have re-did um, a Luceno village, so you can see the quichas there. We also have another photo of the same area, so we can go through right here. So if you're ever in, into Pechanga area, you can probably ask them to go to the culture center to see if you can visit that uh, Indian village. Uh, years ago, what was it, about 12 years ago, we took the rangers here and they did a walk through when that village was uh, created. So I thought that was really great to, to see that. We also, to keep warm in that quicha, right? We made rabbit blankets. Now, we're going to be talking about the uh, rabbit sticks and the hunting a little bit later, but we used rabbits for our, for our blankets. And we had to probably do hundreds of blankets to, to make a bigger one. I have a photo here of a rabbit blanket. And the Lasagna, uh word for the rabbit blanket. We also, people think that we probably just slept on the dirt when I said that we dug that hole three feet deep in there in the circular and had the fire pit, you know, in the middle. But that was mostly for, um, to keep the ground warm. But we didn't just sleep on the ground. We made tule mats from the tules. If you came here in Daly Ranch and you can walk, you can probably see the, the tule uh, growing near the waters and near the lakes, especially around Daly, uh, Dixon Lake. I'm sure that many of you have gone fishing with your parents or your brothers and uncles, and you probably wonder what was that long green reed that's in there. It's not just uh, cattail, it's tule. 
And that's what you can make from the tule. You can make mats to sleep on. And also, the men would make tule boats. Now, the tule boats uh, were made to hold anywhere from 12 to 10 to 12 people. These boats were also used in the rivers and in the lakes, but they are also used in the ocean. So when we we're going to be talking about food uh, and what we had done, they had to have their truly boats to go out there in the ocean so that they can get the, the fish. Thank you for your attention. Okay, in our next segment, we're going to talk about our food sources and how we travel from the coats to the mountains to the desert and from around our own villages. So, Notion Lovic. Mm -hmm.